materials from step by step, please. Mr. Tierney is also already been sworn in, so he's comfortable. Um, my name is Michael Tierney, uh, direct step by step. I'm also the person the school system asked to write the grants that created this position to begin with all those years ago. And this started, uh, this whole process started because there was a recognition that we were woefully inadequate in what we were doing in terms of counseling services, not just the sheer numbers. Uh, we had schools that had no counselors, we had schools that had um, uh, itinerant counselors. Uh, they could barely keep up with one school, let alone two. And um, we got, we were the only county in the country, and actually the only state in the country, that got two grants that year. And there was a couple of things. One, there was some real vision. Um, we've got people like Tom Scarpellini and Rick McDowell and uh, uh, Bill Linville and people who've been in the school system for years with real vision uh, about what to do with at-risk kids. But also, we got the, that money because of just how far behind we were as a county. Um, and the social work position emerged because as we consulted uh, with the State Department of Education about what was really going to make a difference with our dropout rate, with our teen preg keeping pre uh, kids who were pregnant uh, and young parents in school, was they said absolutely a social worker fundamentally has a different set of roles and uh, and value. Unfortunately our state doesn't seem to consider that essential enough to require a school like Lincoln County to have social workers, but that doesn't mean that the, the state recognizes that with a county that had the kind of dropout rate that we did and the kind of truancy problems and unexcused absence problems that we deeply uh, needed not just counseling skills but social work skills. And it was at the urging of the State Department of Education that we actually expanded to write two grants and included a social work position. Um, I don't think anybody in this room, uh, everybody in this room values uh, what Carrie and some of the other folks who are not going to be kept. And uh, we know that's not a question. I guess when I'm asking the board to look at, um, Bertie and Trish have got to do the hardcore numbers. I think you have a responsibility to also think about what kind of school system do we really want to be? And do we want to be a school system that's going to do what we really can to keep the kids who are most hard pressed, the families who are most hard pressed, getting the services they need? And we need a social worker somewhere in the system. Carrie's not just been invaluable at Lincoln High. As part of a team with the overall counselors, I've known a number of the counselors that came up through that grant. I was involved with the advisory group. And people look to Carrie for a whole range of skill sets, for a whole range of resources. Um, it's absolutely not true that the counselors can pick up this slack. Um, we would be in trouble and would be in violation and would be cited if they tried to take on a number of duties that Carrie does because they have very specific requirements about face-to-face -face contact with kids and with families and very specific roles. So some of what unfortunately is considered a set of soft services, um, some of the uh, building that wrap around that needs to be around the kids to make sure they stay in school, um, we would get cited as a county if they picked up that because they would have to neglect their other duties. I don't know a counselor um, that we've got in the system. We're blessed with incredible counselors, but I don't know a counselor that doesn't already go way above beyond what their full-time jobs are. So to pretend that they're going to pick that up, I think is crazy. The other thing is even if we felt like we are absolutely incapable of making the value judgment that we're going to take care of the kids who are most at risk in our county, because I think we've got to face that. This is not something that's going to be picked up. I think if we do not keep a single social work position in the entire county, given the kind of risk factors, we continue to be in the 40s and the 50s with risk factor after risk factor for our young people. Um, even if you felt economically it was impossible for you to not make the decision to basically punt a bunch of those kids, because we're talking about losing kids and families from the school system that we could save, it doesn't make economic sense. And I'm sorry, Bertie, the per pupil expenditure matters. And if we, um, I think Tom could probably testify and give us a list of students that he know, and I don't think there's, there is not a juvenile probation officer that is more respected in this state. So if Tom tells you there are students that would drop out in their sophomore or junior year, if not um, for people like Gary, then that's word. And if you take that on average, if he, if he has 10 or 15 students, that we would not have had two years of per pupil expenditure. 
I know Carrie's got uh, some particularly good uh, records in terms of the um, uh, students that have been pregnant and young parents. And if we conservatively say that there have been 10 to 15 students that have been saved uh, and would have dropped out, most of our teen parents are not in their senior year. Most of our teen parents, sadly, are in 8th and 9th and 10th grade. So if, if Carrie manages to get these kids through school, we're talking two to three years of per-pupil expenditure, really for as many as 30 students between Tom's caseload and the teen pregnancy caseload. And that pie, the big pie upon which the state makes, says its state formula of both what they're going to give us and what they expect is based on our total enrollment. So to say that um, it doesn't matter that we may have as many as 20 or 25 students that aren't going to make it through, multiply that, even if on average there was just one and a half, you know, easily, you, we're going to be faced with even more draconian cuts a year and two years from now because of our dwindling uh, per pupil expenditure dollars. I, I really sympathize. We're in a hard place, and I guess the other thing that I wonder can be tried here is can you go with us to the State Board of Education and say, you screwed us over. You broke our system. The way you took it over, the way you closed the high schools, the way we lose the number of students we do in Chattanville uh, because of the long bus travel from Big Ugly and Hearts to come up here, and I know that. I've lived on Big Ugly since 1987, and I would, I would never have let my kid be on the bus as long as it would have been for Big Ugly to come up to Lincoln High. They did end up graduating from high school uh, before that. But it's reasonable for parents down my way to say, I don't want my kids on the bus that long. The state did this to us. And I don't think that they've been held accountable for what they've done. I don't know what power you all feel that you've got. I think you would have droves of people that would go up and say, it's not good enough in a county with this poverty rate, with this drug substance abuse level rate, this teen pregnancy rate, this older dropout rate, because I think, I mean, what I've been amazed is given all the pressures we're under and given the disruptions we've had with the school system, our dropout rate is not nearly as bad as some of the surrounding counties. And if I could point to two people, Tom Scarpley has had a lot to do with it. We have an incredible juvenile probation system. But within the school system, I was going to point to one person in the system, it's Carrie. Because Carrie's been the one who's been able to keep those kids from slipping through the cracks. You are easily going to be losing between seventy dollars and $100,000 a year in per pupil expenditure money within 18 months. With kids that will not make it through, that you cannot expect your counselors to pick up, you cannot expect your teachers. They are already giving sweat, blood, heart, and soul above and beyond. I don't know any of those people that are already working more than full time. So no, given that, I think the decision you've got is, do we want to be a school system that is, one, going to say we're going to do everything we can for the least of these, for the kids that are most at risk? And I consider that both a moral and an educational and a spiritual obligation that we share as a community. And second, are we going to have some long-term economic sense here? Because if we lose 10 to 20 students per year, that wouldn't have dropped out if they didn't have the kind of TLC that this team is providing, um, that is going to have an impact on what the state says they're going to give us for our formula. And it does, it's a disservice to us to pretend that that's not a serious issue. Sure. Um, you said that the state recognized what a value the social work position um, would be for the county, correct? They recognize that in terms of the full, and that's why they're recommended in terms of the initial grants, that we include a social work position. They recognize that they're, they're particularly in a county as high risk as Lincoln County, that there are some key factors that are not going to get fulfilled by traditional council roles. Right. So that's, bar, um, uh, that's the, the head of the counseling department for the state. But that. neither the state board provides a grant nor the state code provides funding for such a position, correct? Uh, that wouldn't be the first time that the State Board of right. Education didn't care enough about counties like ours. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying we need to stand up to and not accept that those kind of drug funding terms. And this uh, wonderful grant that you got, uh, the, the portion for the social worker expired three years ago, is that correct? Uh, yes. And since then, the, the board has done what you said and stepped up and made it a priority for as long as they could for the past three years, correct? Uh, <coughs> it's I not funded from any other source. I disagree that they have made it. If it's been the recommendation for being ripped right now, I cannot agree.
agree with you that it's been made enough of a priority, and particularly given what's going to happen with dropout for people with expenditure money. But I think you it's agree a short with me that for the last three years, it was funded solely by county funds. That I don't have the exact facts. I've assumed that because um, I know that some of the counseling positions, there have been some special grant funds that come in, but I think those are counselor specific. Bertie would know that better than anybody in here. Because there hasn't been another grant for the social work position, correct? Yeah, and there will never will be one. I mean, one of the things that we also pledged as a county was that we were trying to figure out a way to sustain this. And again, I, the state, the, we have a stacked deck that the state has given us, but um, we lack world credibility with going after any future funds like this when we go back to the point where we're not sustaining any of the advances they invested in us to accomplish. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Um, next witness is Mr. Uh, Darlene. She's with uh, Upward Bank. Darlene, when you get seated, would you give <coughs> your last name once again, okay. please? I've heard it, but I. It's Collier, C O L L I E L. Okay. That was Paul. Collier, C O L L I E L. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. When I found out last week that um, Harry's job was in jeopardy, I said, who can I call? What can I do? Because I was just devastated. She is our coordinator, and uh, she helps us with students. Uh, four years ago, when I started coming to Lincoln County High School, we had five students in Upper Bound. Uh, we have 24 now. And uh, I'm not, I don't know what you know about Upper Bound. But Upper Bound, we are a federal grant, and we help students go to high school, uh, high school go to college. And we look at uh, first-generation, low-income students. Uh, so the success rate of Upper Bound is 90 to 98% of students who are in an Upper Bound program will go to college. And she's very instrumental in helping us get those students. She'll say, I have a student who would really be great in Upper Bound. And they fill an application, I'll interview them and the parent. Uh, they get to come to Marshall's campus for five weeks to see what it's like to, to be in college. So she's been a large part of that, not just at Lincoln County, but our whole program all together. Uh, she comes to all the activities. Uh, she's the best coordinator that we have. Uh, she's not afraid to do anything. Uh, she's there for uh, every trip and everything that we do. Uh, the kids love her. We've got two, would you please stand, two of our uh, participants. One of our young men had to leave today. But they're here because they love her. And they know that part of the success that they'll be in, in college is because of, of, of Carrie. Um, anything that, you know, I know we're a grant. We've been defunded a lot. Our money's been taken away. But we have to be creative and, and do what we need to do because we want to service our students. And I have been on school visit at the high school, and I have seen students come to her before they leave for the day, and she gives them food for supper because she knows when they go home they won't have food. I can't imagine you not being able to find some way that you can uh, cut back maybe with lighting, uh, turning off the computers at night. I heard on the news today, and I'm not sure how much it was, but Cabell County has saved thousands and thousands of dollars by doing something like that. Uh, I would think that maybe you could come up with some way uh, to keep her position because she's She's a wonderful person. She loves young people. And on uh, the front of our um, uh, pamphlet here, of the Brown, it says, some people dream of success while others make it happen. And she, she makes it happen with the students at Lincoln County High School. Would you, can we submit those? Yes. Yes. We'll pass it up to that. Wonderful. You know, there's two to one dog members of the board, and then there's the law. I'll also do one to submit one as an exhibit. Uh, there's a picture on the front of the students in Upward Bound from Lincoln County High School who helped with uh, distributing coats this winter. Counselor for no. Um, we do. Um, shall I say? <laughs> we do. She she does get the, some money for helping us uh, with the students. Okay. Yep. So so 
so she had she has this full time job plus a part time job with you. Is that correct? Uh, it's not a part time job. Okay, she gets some money for working with your program. We give them money for helping us with certain things, but it's not like a, considered a part time job. Okay, and the um, but the grant that you're under doesn't fund another person to in order for the money to go to cover her salary. If we would ever get to the point where we, we would have to cut back, we have, uh, we could, you know, she would perform the, the, the things we asked her to and she wouldn't get paid for it. That's happened in the past. So you've had to cut her payments in the past? Not, not her. Another person mm -hmm. who was helping you out? Is that a yes? Yes ma'am. Okay, sorry, it's recorded. Okay. I can't. They can't see your head now. All right. <laughs> okay, I have nothing further. Okay. I have one question. Okay. Do you have enough funding in your budget to pay for this position if it's eliminated by Lincoln County Schools full time? Full time? No, we do not. Uh, nothing else. <coughs> Ms. Carter, wait this oh. uh, Members of the board, any questions? Yes. Mr. Okay. Baker. You said a moment ago you were talking about the percentage of children that are now in the Upper Bound program. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the graduation statistics are for children that are in the upper bound program versus the school population as a whole? As far as graduating from high school? College. College. I think the last, was it 98%? 98%. Uh, of the children that are in the upper bound go on to college and graduate yes. from college? Yes. 98% of students in the upper bound program graduate from high school, uh, college. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, thank you, Ms. Carter. Mm -hmm.